Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. General Hospital Tuesday, July 2 Recap Natalia exposes ABBA's leak to Sonny, Blaze and Christina fear they're cancelled. General Hospital, EH Spoilers Recap for Tuesday, July 2, reveals that Diane Miller, Carolyn Hennessy, arrived in Sonny Corinthos. Morris Fennard office and got updates on his plan to fight Iva Jerome. Mora West for custody of Avery Corinthos, Ava, and Grace Scarola. After Diane warned Sonny about the uphill battle he was facing, she saw the news about the Invader article on her phone and stepped away to get in touch with Alexis Davis, Nancy Lee Gron. Once Diane made the call, she learned Alexis just quit the Invader. Diane pushed Alexis to check what was posted on the website, so Alexis was appalled along with Christina Corinthos Davis, Kate Mansey. After reading the story and hearing Natalia Ramirez's, Eva Leru, hurtful words, Christina insisted she was mostly concerned about Blaze Aka Allison, Ali Rogers, Jacqueline Grace Lopez. That said, Christina ultimately realized this could blow back on her and make it so they wouldn't even let her in the LGBTQIA plus youth center's doors. Meanwhile, Ava looked at all the comments that were blowing up online and demanded another meeting with Adrian Dewitt, Dieterich Gray, who came up the back staircase to avoid being seen coming to her door. Ava once again warned Adrian to keep her name away from this scandal so he claimed he knew the importance of protecting his sources. When Ava suggested taking down the recording since it had served its purpose, Adrian argued that it raised too many questions, not to mention the story had already spread like wildfire to other outlets. Back with Sonny, he checked out the story and fumed over Natalia's true feelings. Diane let Sonny know that Alexis wasn't responsible since she quit the invader, so Sonny vowed that the person behind this now had a target on their back. Sonny felt he had to do something, especially after he saw the backlash online. People were calling for Christina to resign from the center since there were concerns about internal homophobia due to her closeted girlfriend. Sonny got angry enough to throw his phone at the door as he tried to wrap his head around all this. At deception, things flew up for Natalia as Maxie Jones, Kirsten Storms, and the others all got the scoop on what a bigot she was. Blaze was horrified over the recording and confronted Natalia, who didn't even remember saying those words or who she said them to. That infuriated Blaze since Natalia was apparently saying things like that often enough to not recall the exact conversations. Blaze ripped into Natalia for her view of gay people in general, as well as Natalia's view of her relationship with Christina. Lucy Co., Lynn Herring, piped up about how ironic it was that Natalia locked Blaze in the closet, and had now outed her. Blaze lashed out over Natalia, ruining her career, and refused to stick around to listen to Natalia's attempts to downplay her actions. Once Blaze was gone, Lucy tore up her contract. Natalia wondered if they'd really do that because Blaze was gay, but Maxie argued that the real concern was Blaze being ashamed of her identity since they were a gay-friendly company. Maxie warned that Blaze and Natalia would have to get with the program or kick rocks. After Natalia tossed some threats around and left, Maxie admitted to Lucy, Loy Cirillo, Rena Suffer and Scott Baldwin, Kent Schreiner, that she only said all that about Blaze to make Natalia get in line. Since a PR crisis was erupting and they had to make a statement, Scott needed to know the team's decision about Blaze's future at deception. Back at Christina's place, Blaze showed up and realized Christina had already seen the online scandal. Christina and Blaze felt they had both been cancelled, so Blaze offered her an out if she wanted to part ways. Once Christina assured Blaze that she wanted to remain a couple, she professed her love and insisted they could get through this. Blaze wasn't so sure, though she admitted that breaking up was the last thing she wanted. 
Christina reiterated that they could conquer this and remained hopeful about Blaze's career too. After Alexis found Adrian at the Metro court pool, she threatened him with lawsuits and pointed out that Natalia wasn't a public figure like her daughter. Once Alexis got Adrian nervous, she offered to make all this go away if he'd give her the name of the person who leaked the recording. Next on Tuesday's VH episode, Alexis surprised Ava by showing up at her door and insisting they needed to have a conversation that wouldn't be recorded. In Natalia's vehicle, she thought about her negative comments and eventually had a look of realization on her face. Soon after, Natalia tracked Sonny down and acknowledged that he probably didn't want to see her, but she felt he should know Ava was the one who made and leaked the recording. The summer heat settled over Port Charles, the humidity palpable even within the cool walls of General Hospital. The usual hustle and bustle of the ER and various departments seemed to hum at a higher frequency today as if the city itself sensed the undercurrents of tension and intrigue that would unfold. Natalia Cassidine made her way through the corridors with purpose, her heels clicking sharply against the linoleum floor. Her face, usually a mask of controlled emotions, was set in a determined scowl. She clutched a manila envelope tightly in her hand, its contents potentially explosive for the residents of Port Charles. Her destination was the Metro Court Hotel, where she had a scheduled meeting with Sonny Corinthos. Meanwhile, in a corner of the hospital cafeteria, Blaze and Christina Corinthos Davis sat at a table, their expressions mirroring each other's worry. Blaze, the rising pop star with a tumultuous past, had recently found solace and purpose in her music career. Christina, Sonny's spirited daughter, had been managing Blaze's career, and the two had become fast friends. However, today they faced a crisis that threatened to derail everything they had worked for. What do you think it means, Christina? Blaze asked, her voice barely above a whisper. She glanced around nervously, as if the walls had ears. Christina sighed, running a hand through her dark hair. I don't know, Blaze. The network silence is really freaking me out. We've been putting everything into this tour, and if we're canceled. Blaze's eyes filled with tears, and she quickly wiped them away. I can't go back to where I was before. This music, this career, it's everything to me. Christina reached across the table, squeezing Blaze's hand. We're not going to let that happen. We'll figure something out, I promise. As they sat in their shared silence, Natalia arrived at the Metro Court and was promptly escorted to Sonny's private office. Sonny Corinthos, the powerful mob boss with a complex moral code, stood by the window, looking out over the city he controlled from the shadows. He turned as Natalia entered, his dark eyes assessing her with a mixture of curiosity and caution. Natalia, Sonny greeted, his voice smooth yet commanding. What brings you here today? Natalia handed him the envelope without preamble. You need to see this, Sonny. It's about Ava. Sonny's expression hardened at the mention of Ava Jerome, his ex-wife and perpetual thorn in his side. He took the envelope and opened it, his eyes scanning the documents within. As he read, his jaw clenched. These are recordings, Natalia explained. Ava has been leaking information to your enemies. I don't know why, but she's putting everyone at risk. Sonny's mind raced. Ava's actions could destabilize the fragile peace he had worked so hard to maintain. Why are you bringing this to me, Natalia? Natalia's eyes flashed with a mixture of anger and determination. Because Ava's betrayal affects my family too. The Cassadines have a vested interest in keeping the balance of power in Port Charles. If Ava's actions lead to chaos, it could have repercussions for all of us. Sonny nodded slowly. I appreciate you bringing this to me. I'll handle Ava. But know this, Natalia. If you're playing any kind of game, I will find out. Natalia met his gaze unflinchingly. I'm not playing games, Sonny. This is about survival for all of us. 
Back at the hospital, Blaze and Christina decided to confront the network directly. They made their way to an empty conference room where they could have a video call without interruption. As they waited for the call to connect, Blaze's hands shook slightly. Christina put a reassuring hand on her shoulder. We've got this, Christina said firmly. No matter what happens, we're in this together. The screen flickered to life and the network executive's face appeared. His expression was unreadable, a professional mask that revealed nothing of his thoughts. Blaze Christina, he began, I know you're concerned about the recent silence from our end. There have been some discussions about the future of your tour. Blaze's heart sank. She tried to keep her voice steady. Are we canceled? The executive hesitated, and for a moment, Blaze's world seemed to tilt on its axis. Then he spoke again, more gently this time. No, you're not canceled. But there are some changes coming. We're going to need to scale back some aspects of the tour. Budget cuts, you understand. Relief and frustration warred within Blaze. Christina stepped in, her voice firm and clear. We understand budget cuts, but we need to make sure Blaze's vision isn't compromised. She's worked too hard for this. The executive nodded, we'll do our best to accommodate. We believe in Blaze's talent and we want to see her succeed. After the call ended, Blaze and Christina hugged tightly. We're not canceled, Blaze whispered, tears of relief streaming down her face.